previously on board. <laughs> All right, we are very happy to uh, catch up. Sorry, Phil, we're about to head off there. Is, uh, <laughs> is the missus uh, getting you to do things at the, around the house or what? I've only just arrived back from uh, America. And, oh, really? Um, so I'm just trying to organize myself for the day. <laughs> All right, we've got a lovely Skype link with you. Nice to see and hear the voice of uh, cycling. Yes, Phil. Joining us on uh, Balls Radio for the first time. How are you doing, Phil? You're doing good. Yeah, doing very good. I've just done the tour of Switzerland, and um, we did it in America, so I flew back overnight, and now I'm getting myself ready for the tour. All right, so what, you got to commentate, commentate off the tube? Yeah, well, that, I'll, I'll do that from sight. We drive over to Belgium a week uh, on Wednesday, and, of course, the race starts a week on Saturday yeah. in Belgium, which is odd for a Tour de France, isn't it? But <laughs> we start in Belgium, we stay mostly in France, and we do go into Switzerland for a day as well. All right, nothing as bizarre as the Tour de France starting in England. Uh, I think it did one year, didn't it? <laughs> it did indeed, a couple yeah. of years ago, and we had over three million spectators. Wow. Uh, it was a tremendous occasion. Mm. Yeah, the two biggest uh, sort of questions, um, like what, what do you call ir- ironies? Tour de France starting in England. Uh, in fact, I think it started in Spain, it started in, in a few different countries, and the Dakar rally happening in Argentina. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. It got a bit dangerous, I think, the Paris Dakar, yeah. and so they they moved it to South America, where I believe it's proved quite a success. They've always asked me to commentate on it, but you know, it's over the New Year time, and I think I would be shot alive if I started working right through Christmas as well. So they really they are, they wanted you to commentate on the Dakar. Yes, it's the same organisation as the Tour de France. All right, so, awesome. This is one of their many uh, arms, which they do quite a number of sports, including tennis. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. uh, it's nice to chat to you. And um, we obviously last week were, were stunned. I was actually watching CNN, and then the news broke about Lance Armstrong and the uh, the, the accusations, uh, the claims that that have come forward again. And now seeing people like Tyler Hamilton go on TV to say no, he witnessed it, he was there. Ten of his teammates yeah. coming forward as well. And and I mean Lance has come back and and and, and publicly said, look, this is no different to what uh, what was investigated beforehand. How different is it exactly? What has come out now, Phil? In, in other words, how close are Usada and the people that are trying to nail him closer to actually getting some kind of a uh, a case going here? Well, you know, uh, the answer is I really don't know. I've got the 15-page notification document uh, here in England with me, and I've read through it. Believe me, it's complicated. Um, but I've so far seen nothing new in the inquiry whatsoever. And uh, I think Armstrong and Johan Brunel and the doctors who have been charged, one doctor they've named, has never been remotely concerned with any controversy with drugs. Uh, and, of course, he's kicking like mad because he's feeling rather insulted. But uh, what didn't go through uh, with, the, um, with the feds in the United States, the legal people who put, uh, did a two-year investigation to take it right down, the FBI said there was no case, case to answer. Um, but uh, the United States Doping Agency have asked for all of those papers now, whether they get them is another matter, mm. uh, because it's not the same level of prosecution if it's only a sporting prosecution. So they may feel they have a case against Armstrong. But at the moment, from what's in the letter, and Armstrong has repeatedly requested for full, fuller details, which I think he's every right to do, um, it's saying nothing new. Now, all of these uh, cyclists and people who are saying that they've seen Lance uh, take drugs uh, most of them have been discredited since and are in disgrace and some of them have received money to make such statements so and you know if I say I don't like you and get nine other guys to say I don't like you is that the evidence that we don't like you yeah. I mean it's circumstantial you've got to have the proof and I think uh, I don't think they have any proof now Lance has obviously said look I've, I've defended these exact claims before and I'm not fighting yeah. them anymore I'm moving on Clearly, he can't just stand by and let, let these things happen. So it clearly sounds like, by some of the requests that have come through from his side, that, uh, that he is going to stand up and fight this latest wave of allegations. Well, I think he must do. I mean, I get accused of defending Lance. I'm not defending Lance, I, even though I do know him, but I haven't seen him in over a year. Um, but the fact is that, that you're innocent until proven guilty, and everybody that's gone for Lance has failed, and they've all withdrawn their cases. I, I don't know what the backing is for, for USADA, the United States agency, uh, but they seem intent on nailing their own countryman, which is an American. This is the American agency. Mm. I don't even know if they can bring to justice people like Johan Brunel, who's a Belgian and accused of no offence within the United States territory. I don't even know if they can even do that. But, you know, although this 15-page letter of notification has gone out, 
Uh, it still has to go to the United States Anti-Doping Agency's review board before they even review it. If they say you have got a case, it'll fall at that point. If it goes on, it will be heard and it will be sorted before November this year. Just speaking in terms of finally putting uh, putting this to rest one way or the other, mm-hmm. uh, and let's look at it from Lance's side first of all. I mean, he's claimed his innocence. As you say, there have been investigations. Would it not be better to say, right, one more time, bring whatever your accusations are, bring whatever your evidence you say you have, the blood manipulation, whatever, yeah. whatever you might have that is new. Let's have a look at this now because... I haven't done this stuff, so let's get it out. But now, when we when when the result comes out, now that's it, final. It's done, and I can carry on with my life. I can keep my seven Tour de France's and everything else. And obviously, I mean, some people would be would be in for some serious repercussions if it comes out that he is clean and they've gone on uh, gone on record saying that they witnessed him doing it. Would it not be in his best interest to now finally put pay to this by going through the process? Well, it would be, and I think it's, it's at the end of the day, it will happen. I mean, Johan Brunil, his manager, is also cited in yeah. the notification letter, has said, bring it on. I am happy to co- cooperate with you, and I will help all I can to prove uh, my innocence. He said, I've never been involved in drugs. And we don't know the answer, you see. The trouble is that Armstrong came back from cancer, and he was on his deathbed. He's the first to tell you that, and his surgeons are. And never looking like a winner of the Tour de France, when he comes back from his cancer, his body shape has changed, his mind, he he now appreciates life because he said, I've been to my deathbed and I'm not going back. Uh, And he wins the Tour seven times in a row, which nobody's ever done. So, of course, the rumors have started. Mm. um, But you've got to prove if, if he has taken drugs. And he's passed over 500 doping controls. And not just regular ones where you know you're going to be uh, having to... Uh, turn up for the test but out of competition where they've on one occasion three different controlling authorities arrived at his house to test him in the same day Mm. and all of those were clean so they've got to really give concrete evidence no good um, a a disgruntled teammate saying yeah he's taken EPO I've seen him take it Uh, that's no proof Yeah. yeah 25 guys can say that it's still no proof they, the, the argument that they've been using is the Marion Jones one, where apparently every test that she took, she passed as well. Uh, so there was no yes. evidence found of drugging, and uh, they also said but the blood know, manipulation. So tests, what's the comparison there all about? Well, the tests weren't as sophisticated then as yeah. they are now. Now they have the tests for all the known uh, sinister drugs like EPO. They, uh, bet- in the 90s, there was no test for EPO. Riders were buying these ampules on the open market because it wasn't on the ban list and using it. Mm. Uh, and nobody could prove any otherwise. Then they brought in uh, rules to say, well, if your blood, blood red cell count goes over 50, uh, then you must be taking uh, synthetic EPO to boost it. Uh, so, f- so they didn't say you were guilty. They just stopped you cycling because you've gone over this allowed limit of 50. But there are some guys who have got a normal hemocratic level of over 50. They had to get letters from the doctors to say it was okay. Uh, That was that. But now they have the test. Now they know if you use EPO and have done since about 2001. And Lance has passed those particular tests. Although they're saying there's irregularities in the test, they're actually saying that the UCI has covered up a positive EPO test by Lance Armstrong. Armstrong did indeed give over a hundred thousand US dollars to the world cycling body. Uh, that's a known fact. Uh, the body has since come out and said yes, and will never accept such money again from an athlete. Uh, but he did it uh, to uh, to uh, form a fund which uh, went to laboratories to fight uh, the illegal use of drugs, and that's where the money went. Yeah. So you know, it's all got to come out, as you say. It's got to be aired in the open. Uh, but whatever happens now. I think a lot of people in the world will always believe that Armstrong drug to win his races. And I think personally at the moment, that's very unfair. Yeah. And um, it's, it's mm. the old the sort of newspaper headline scenario. You know, they can say they're Armstrong in drug scandal. That's what people see without yeah. delving into the story. And, and you're, by association, you're guilty. Phil? Correct. Phil, um, if eventually proved and uh, Lance is punished, I mean, he risks having those seven tour titles stripped. Uh, but the yes. organisers would have a major headache, wouldn't they? I mean, they have to reassign his seven wins, but also the 22 stages. Can you imagine? 
I, I, well, I, I dread it. I mean, I would feel totally disgusted with everybody concerned. But if you take a look at the second place riders who will be given the titles, half of them are all, discredited they as all well. Dope already. <laughs> yeah. Jan yes. Ulrich, uh, Ivan Basso. Yes. These guys would get victories they never deserve. Yes. And in the Contador case, which was the biggest farce in modern times when he's uh, been disqualified from the Tour de France in 10. Uh, that yellow jersey has just been awarded to Andy Schleck. Schleck doesn't want the yellow jersey. He doesn't believe Contador was drugged to beat him. Uh, but he said, I had to take it because it was given to me. Um, it's crazy. There's only so much you can do. Um, and I think sometimes you have to look forward. No, everybody's acknowledging there were drugs in the sport big time for, uh, during that period. But I believe they're cleaning it out wholesalely now mm. and we must go forward yet they are prepared to spend millions of dollars to try and prove Armstrong guilty of something and so far they've lost at every hurdle All right, I'll get back to that in a moment just want to pick up on that uh, that whole question with John and uh, by the looks of things cyclists who as you say were discredited for taking drugs but not necessarily related to the Tour de France would yeah. if La Armstrong is found guilty and he has all his Tour de France is taken away these guys, having finished second, runners-up, in most cases, uh, would receive the, the, the win for that year, despite yes. the fact that they were discredited in other areas. Now, that to me seems completely bizarre that they are basically also drug cheats. They've been found guilty. But because it wasn't related to Tour de France, they will be declared the winners. That is where it seems like it's an absolute farce. Yeah. It is, and that's exactly what would happen. The, the, the would have no choice because those riders in that particular race had passed all the drug controls therefore they're clean the uh, same would happen in an Olympic Games uh, and has happened with Tyler Hamilton yeah. of course because uh, he was found uh, guilty in the Olympics and lost his gold medal um, and it's got it went to the Russian Vyacheslav Ekimov uh, yeah you're exactly right and then of course we have to go and amend every record book we've got and uh, wipe out uh, the world uh, I mean Originally, Lance was only being accused of one Tour de France when he, they reincarnated his frozen uh, urine samples and then said there were definitely traces of EPO use uh, back in the late 1990s. Mm. Uh, well, I think if you check the 1990s, that wasn't on the banned substance list then because it wasn't known. That's the only reason it would have been if it had been known. Um, and I just don't know where that this can of worms, which is so messy, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it is. It's an absolute mess. And the other thing is, what does it mean for an event uh, as big as the Tour de France? Lance Armstrong, it is, does come out that he is, uh, that he is guilty, um, just mm. on that hypothetical scenario. You know, the Tour de France has taken so many blows. It can be like, it's, it's, yep. it's a massive event. It's one of the, the best sports in the world. But how many blows can it take? And can it survive a blow like this if it comes out that... that uh, even even with the rumours that are going around now? I think it will. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but two weeks before the Tour de France every year, there is a major drug yeah. scandal starts somewhere. It's yeah. usually an old one, reincarnated, but I don't know why it is, but the, uh, the, the agencies, the people, all seem to want to hit the Tour de France. This is not related to any particular Tour de France. This is related to Armstrong, but that's what happens every year just before the Tour starts. And the same with the Contador situation last year when he was dragged on uh, from his uh, clenbuterol charges. Um, it makes a farce of everything. The Tour will always go on. The Tour de France is, is loved by the people, mm. and they turn out in their tens of thousands, millions indeed, to watch it on a daily basis. It's still very, very popular, and it's still very transparent. But there's no doubt that the organization, again, always find themselves having to explain, even though they've been dragged in um, uh, by, by connection to Lance Armstrong and not by any other reason. And, I mean, for example, Bradley Wiggins, who is the first time we've ever had a British favorite to win the Tour de France this year. He's now, his team is now being called on uh, to make reports to the, work, to the Tour de France organizers simply because Wiggins goes away and doesn't race for three weeks. Then he comes back and wins the race. Then he goes away again. And this is exactly how Armstrong won his mm -hmm. tour. Um, they don't over race. They just, for example, right now he's, he's training at Altitude in Mallorca in Spain. Um, and they're demanding to say, well, what are you doing in this training? because they want to make sure he's not building up with a, a little bit of a back charge of EPO, mm. uh, because that's when you do it, weeks before the race starts, and then suddenly come out and win the Tour de France. Uh, but you bet your life that the testers will be in Spain and will be checking Bradley Wiggins. But the inference is always there. Nobody believes 
in a clean athlete anymore. And yet Wiggins has never remotely been involved in drugs. Cavendish hasn't. And neither has last year's winner, Cadell Evans. They are the cleanest people in the sport. Paul, well, it's been great to catch up with you, and thanks for uh, giving us a little bit of insight and background into the uh, the whole debate and the debacle that will go on for uh, a long time still, I'm sure. I think this one, well, if it goes to November, uh, when it's the deadline, they said it must all be cleared up, and Lance is, on, and the rest of them is found guilty. Bet your life it'll go then to CAS, which is the Court of Arbitration yeah. in Switzerland, and on and on. And on and on. So <laughs> I'm sure we'll be chatting to you again soon. But uh, uh, enjoy your uh, return home and your uh, your rest. And uh, do you still are you still making the odd trip or two to South Africa every year? I've actually uh, just come uh, prior to America. I was in the Richtersfeld, which oh, is lovely. In, oh, absolutely the most wildest place I've ever been in my life, and the first time in my life. I haven't been able to make a telephone call or write an email for 10 days. Isn't it that great? A, a most remote place. I think we saw four vehicles in the seven days we were inside the park. It was fabulous. That yeah. was probably John trying to find Dude, you. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, if, um, if South Africans realize just what a beautiful country they have. Oh, we yes, do. We, uh, and yeah, I mean, I haven't even been there. So there's one place yeah. I haven't oh, even you, seen. That's where, that's where your TV is your fire, isn't it, Phil? But you must take somebody with you because if you roll your four-wheel drive, there ain't nobody going to come along. And tell you <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Phil. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we look forward to hearing your dulcet tones again during the Tour de France this year. And we look forward to catching up again <laughs> sometime. Much. Thank you, Phil. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we go. Phil Liggett Skyping us as he returns back home. Uh, in England and talking about the whole Lance Armstrong issue. If you only joined us for that, uh, funny enough, his uh, his Skype picture is him cycling next next to Lance Armstrong. Yes, yes. Uh, as he but he hasn't spoken to him for uh, for over a year. So, uh, but giving some uh, context to uh, all of this, which, as we say, will probably go on for a good time. To we the best on three. One, two, three. We the best. Two p.m. to six p.m. Mondays to Fridays, live on balls.co.za. Balls.co.za.